Hey, how's it going, sign shop owners, print shop owners, fabricators, and Shopbox users? It's Peter Karunas with Shopbox here with another video coming at you. This time we're going to be talking about pipelines, and pipelines is really where the entire engine to your system, the entire wheels to your business start to run in the right direction. What do I mean by that? Well, you're just going to have to stay tuned and find out. All right, so in our last video, we talked a lot about sales leads. Now you're going to take those sales leads and you're going to populate them into your sales leads list. And that's great. Feed the baby, feed the pig. Whatever analogy, whatever metaphor you're looking for, you have to stuff your system with leads. Your system cannot thrive. Your shop cannot thrive without an influx and a constant influx of sales leads. A helpful tip here, try and focus on getting your shop to hit that first target benchmark. Somewhere between 25 and 30 leads per week should get you going on the right direction. So you have this leads list and that's great. You have it, it's, it, 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 it's living, it's breathing, but those leads that are on that lead list need to be entered into a sales pipeline. And that's what this video here is all about today. Now, let's talk about sales pipelines for a minute. What is a sales pipeline? Well, for those of you that don't know what a pipeline is, it's basically your process, right? Your, your process of taking a lead and making it into a closed sale. And there's many steps in between that, that that lead is going to jump from. And that primarily is the focus of your sales team is to take a lead and move them from step to step to step because that's progress. And that's what we strive for in our sales pipeline process is progress. We don't want anybody stale or stagnant in a step that's taking two or three weeks. We wanna get them to that next step, inching them closer to a close. Now, a good sales force, a good sales team is always closing here, but, Typically in our industry, it's a process. You have to go through a series of different steps in your pipeline. It's going to allow you to give your team the tasks needed to be done on a daily basis. So what do I mean by that? Well, when you add a lead into your system, it's gonna get dumped into the very first step of your sales pipeline. That sales pipeline is has certain tasks that are inside of it, and each task is typically assigned to someone. Is it your sales manager? Is it your surveyor? Is it your estimator, your project manager, your sales associate, a cold caller? What is it? That's typically the process here. That's that's what we're going to define here as your process. All of the steps from beginning to end on a given project. But we're going to take that a little bit more deeper here. Uh, I think it's important to highlight that you could very well have a sales pipeline process for every single product that you sell in your business. That's right. You can really have a process for illuminated channel letter signs. You can have a pipeline process for light boxes. You could have a sales pipeline process for awnings and anything else, monument signs, dimensional letters, vehicle wraps, vehicle graphics, flatbed printing, wide format printing, banners, you name it, anything that you can think of, you could have a sales pipeline process for that product. But for the sake of this video and your time, we're really not going to go down that rabbit hole. And why? I don't actually think that that is the correct way to go through your sales pipeline process to really get it too complex that you have a different system for a different product. That's what workflow stages are and that's for another video. That's for another video for another time. But let's take a look at generality, shall we? Let's really look at like an example here, extremely high level of course, but 
you, let's generalize the sign category to a, a pipeline process that's comprised of the title exterior and interior signs pipeline. Simple. It covers the gamut from a vinyl print on a substrate to a monument sign and anything that you can think of. But it's a process. And what do those steps inside that process look like? Well, generality speaking, that's going to be something that you can make that's different from shop to shop. Your process is your process, and that's what makes your shop unique. So kudos to you, but it's going to be up to you to come up with those steps, those steps on step one, contact the customer. Great. Get more details. Let them know. Set the seed. Set the seed. Set the expectation. Set the mood to how this journey for the customer is going to go. Usually that can be a text and an email and a phone call. Not one of those three. All of those three. And then you kind of move on. And you kind of talk about, well, I need to survey this particular customer's job site. I want to take photos. I want to get measurements. I want to get pictures. And that's a very important step. But is it your second step? Possibly. Quite possibly. And then the third step after that, well, you know, I don't know. Let's think about a free mock-up. You know, you're going to take those photos that you just took in the time and let's let's put a visual aid here. Let's put a visual cue together that the customer can trigger some ideas in their head here and whether or not that this project, that this quote is really going to um, stimulate a purchasing decision. We've done videos on how to do free mock-ups, which you can watch right here. And that's going to really go into that entire process of how long it should take, who should do it, how often it should be done. But your shop may not want to go down that route and provide a free mock-up. And if that's, and that's certainly okay. That's not, it's not for everybody. It's certainly not for shops that don't need it. But in order to get sales and to really stimulate a purchasing decision, a visual cue, in my opinion, is definitely something that has worked in the past that has led to hundreds of thousands of dollars, possibly even millions of dollars in sales with that particular type of angle. So let's move on to the third step. The third step here after a mock-up is really kind of just put together that estimate, right? You need to connect that estimate with that visual aid or can, or give that customer a estimate that's going to inch them closer to making a sale. After you put together that estimate, well, maybe you might want to check your inventory or potentially you might want to check your inventory before you make that estimate so that you know how much things are going to cost or if you have something in stock or if you don't, if it needs to be ordered and et cetera. Maybe those types of uh, steps can alternate either three and four or four to three, whatever the case may be here. But you're going to want to check your inventory. You're going to want to call some suppliers. You're going to want to check on pricing, check your vendors, see if they have things in stock and, and make sure that you convey that message if they aren't in stock to, your, to that customer. If you're outsourcing items, you're definitely going to want to talk to those vendors before you put together your estimate. So again, some of these steps are going to be different for your shop, but you definitely want to take out and map out a process for each one of these types of scenarios. After that, maybe what's the next step? After you've put together your estimate, maybe you might want to get that estimate approved by a sales manager before you send it out to the customer, which is always the last step in your pipeline before you either win or lose and a job is really like, did you send that estimate out? Yes, it's sent out. That's the final step of your sales pipeline. You sent out that estimate, but now you have to work. You actually have to work the lead. You have to actually work the estimate. What are you doing here? This You've completed the sales pipeline. You've completed the estimating pipeline. But you really can go further if you want, but you can say, okay, maybe my customers are need a follow-up. Maybe my customers need a follow-up email, follow-up text message. Maybe my customer needs uh, uh, another round of revisions. I don't know. But the bottom line is, is that that process from beginning to end is going to be yours and yours alone to make. And it's what makes your shop unique. So my only tip here is to really create a couple of different versions of your sales pipeline. And what do I mean by that? When you finally drop a lead into your pipeline, into your list, they're typically inquiring about one item. Now that's not always the case. But generally it is, they're asking for a price on X, 
They're asking for a price on vehicle wraps. They're asking for a price on wrapping five trucks. They're asking for a price on channel letters, awnings, light boxes, monuments, post and panels, banners. They're asking for a price and if, or if you do these types of products. They're not always, again, this is not for everyone, but they're not always giving you a project that consumes of five or six different types of signs or printing that you have to do. It's not how the majority of leads come in. They're not saying, hey, I need a price on awning, menu boards, vehicle wraps, car magnets, uniforms, a website build, where, you know, that's like putting them into a hundred different pipelines. That's not typically how it comes in. They're not coming into your system that's going to be looking for an awning, uniforms, window graphics, channel letters, a vehicle wrap, vehicle magnets, and a, and a coming soon banner. That might be what they all need. That might be what they get. But typically speaking, in my experience, that's coming in with the major ask. Do you do a vehicle wrap? Do you How much for that vehicle wrap? Do you do channel letters? How much for a set of channel letters? That's where the lead's going to come in. Where you take it, and you can it can certainly evolve into those other areas. It could certainly evolve into those other purchase items that they inquired about, but you're really going to want to stick with that one major one, right? The one that's going to take the long, the longest time, the one that may need permitting, surveying, land, uh, building department approval, sign permit approval, things like that. That's the one that you're going to want to start with. And you're going to want to have certain pipelines that are going to cover the basics. So you already heard me talk about a general interior, exterior sales pipeline. And that's going to be wonderful. That's going to be the one that you're going to use the majority of the time. But what about an outsourced sales pipeline? Vended items that you need a certain pipeline for, which can be a different sales pipeline process because you're not building it internally. What about a wide format printing or flatbed printing sales pipeline. That, there's, that's a much shorter pipeline with very few steps, but it's a differentiator because it's not the same type of step that you would normally do for, let's say, an outsourced product, a vended product, or the next pipeline, a vehicle graphic slash vehicle wrap sales pipeline. Because why, do, why are we talking about this? Why are we differentiating our sales pipelines? And that's because in Shopbox, you can create as many pipelines as you want. It's designed for this purpose. It's designed to, so that you can monitor where your customers are falling off, which pipelines you're putting the majority of your customers in that can help you make marketing decisions on which Custom, what your actual product is, what your product is that your customers are buying, and what customers you should be attracting for ongoing marketing purposes. Again, extremely high level information that you can use to make sound business decisions for your business. And keep in mind, again, you can clearly see the obvious. There are different onboarding steps in your pipeline for a vehicle wrap, than there is for a exterior sign, that there is for vinyl printing, that there would be for window graphics or wall murals, whatever the case may be, it's gonna be a different pipeline. But the key here is to not make a pipeline for every single product that you sell. You don't need to do that. It doesn't need to be that complex. You're gonna complex your system. People are gonna get frustrated and people are gonna go on system overload and they're not going to know what to do or if they're doing it right. So that's a little bit about sales pipelines. Definitely take a look at Shopbox Pro and take a look at those sales pipelines and what you can do with that and how that can better your sign and print shop. Uh, I've been using sales pipelines in our system for many years. It's the simplest thing. It's making my life easier. But here's the, here's the key here. When you introduce new employees into your system, a pipeline, they don't, they're not familiar with your process. They're not familiar with the way you do things. But when you can put it in a dashboard, a visual aid, a visual cue to see, and it tells you which steps there are to take, it means that you're not going to have any cracks in your system. And with Shopbox amazing features of assigning tasks and creating notes and co collecting all that data in those assets inside the cloud, all of your answers and all of the answers for your sales pipeline steps are going to be centralized into one place 
within Shopbox that makes it so easy for everybody else to see. So that's it for me in this video. That's it about sales pipelines. Definitely create a couple, I'd say three, four, five sales pipelines should be enough for the majority of you. But if you are a fabricating shop and you want to take that a little step further, you definitely can. There's no limit to the amount of sales pipelines that you can create inside of Shopbox Pro. So definitely have some fun with the sales pipeline process, but put some thought behind it. Definitely make sure that you're not forgetting your steps, which steps are the most important steps to accomplish. And remember, definitely have fun with it because it's going to increase your revenue. It's going to make sure it saves you money because people are not dropping off as easily. And remember, it's designed to have a little fun with it, but you're going to want to put some thought into it. But the more thought that you put into it is the more that you get out of it. I'm Peter Karunas with Shopbox. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all. Thank you so much for subscribing and making this channel such a great success. It's been so much fun so far. I look forward to doing these videos and I thank you so much for all the feedback that you've been giving me. It's been making me feel so nice inside, so welcome and heartfelt inside. I love the comments that I'm getting. It means so much to me that I'm able to help a lot of you out there with your sign and print shops. If you need any further assistance, do me a favor, leave some comments below. I read them all. I can try, I'm trying to get back to all of you as often as I can. But for those of you that have not subscribed to this channel, I will wait five seconds and you will go ahead and subscribe now because I'm going to be giving away something really nice. Go ahead. I'll wait. All right. So that was easy, right? I mean, that was simple cake work, you a couple clicks here and there and you're done. And for that, I'm going to give you Shopbox free ebook. I'm going to put the link in the description below for you. This ebook, when you put your information in, you'll download it for free. It is one amazing piece of collateral that every sign shop, every print shop should be should read. It is one amazing ebook that every sign shop owner and every sign shop manager, every print shop owner, every print shop manager, every fabricator, every woodworking shop owner, you guys must read this book. The team here at Shopbox put their time and effort into picking apart a couple of different pieces that they think could really help you, including running your business, marketing your business, how you should set up Shopbox with your team and how it can help you. There's a lot in there. Definitely take a look at it. It helped me and I still learn things about it. I can't believe what Shopbox can do for your business. And that's what this team here is for, making sure that we are successful together. We are stronger together than we are alone. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Peter Karunas with Shopbox. Have a wonderful day and don't forget, Stay positive out there.